now we're gonna talk about an MVP mm-hmm. on Instagram, so it seems, for the dribbling, for Handle Life. You know how about Handle Life? I know that. He's oh. not on Instagram. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> social media fast. <laughs> but hey, Binky, Binky's can handle the ball. She's a, what did I say, a dribbling dynamo. So let's get to know you. Talk about your upbringing with basketball, or when did basketball come into your life? Probably when I was around um, seven or eight years old. So my, mm-hmm. my brother, he's a year older. He's always loved basketball. And whenever my dad would bring him to his little training sessions, I would kind of tag along. And then around the same time was when the Raptors started up, mm-hmm. so like 95, 96 season. And I was always told, like, you can't play because you're little. I was, like, not even <laughs> four feet tall. Really? So then after, people would say, you can't play. The Raptors drafted Damon Stoudemire. And then I started watching him. And I'm like, he's 5'10" barely 5'10", and he's yeah. amazing. So I wanted to be just like him. I started playing after that, and then my dad put me in an all-girls league, and he saw that I was pretty good at it. So he's like, why don't you just play with your brother so I don't have to drop both of you off, and, oh. you know, it saves him some time. Wow. So, That's some Filipino that's mindset Filipino. right there. Right? Yeah, so he stuck yeah. me with my brother for, with yeah. the boys for, like, a few years, and then that's how I kind of got, I was forced to play like a guy and that's all I learned growing up was how to play like a guy so that's how I started wanting to dribble like my brother and shoot like my brother and play like my brother and then I just started watching a lot of basketball not just Raptors but and everything else so Penny Hardaway Grant Hill some of my favorite players mm-hmm. and then I just became an even bigger Raptor fan when Vince Carter got drafted mm-hmm. obsessed with Vince Carter wow. and wow. Allen Iverson and all that stuff and then from then on I just kept playing that's a cool thing you mentioned. Vince Carter is a is a, is a big Air staple. Canada. Yeah, yeah, he was the. It's a big influencer to like a lot of Canadian ballers because yeah. when Vince Carter came and when he made those like. Put them on the map. He put, he put Toronto on the map. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of players, a lot of Canadian players are mentioning Vince Carter was the mm-hmm. reason why. Yeah. They are where they are, like Wiggins, uh, a couple of players like you know uh, Corey Joseph. Mm-hmm. A lot of people watched. Yeah, like Vince a lot Carter. of even Kevin Durant said Vince Carter is his favorite player. Yeah. yeah. Hoping he, he would come to the Raptors at the time. We thought so for <laughs> a second. <laughs> thought, Let's yeah. talk about like, okay, so you're let, you, you're known to be a dribbler. Who is your favorite ball handler um, that you've, like you said that you, you follow that became a staple in your game? What uh, ball handler was your most favorite? Growing up, Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. I copied everything he did from like, gosh. The elbow pad, headband, I had my hair so braided. Had hair I was like 12 oh, yeah, years old. The finger bands, they wouldn't let you wear it in a game, but I had them. Um, mm-hmm. Put like a wristband on my knee. And then they had all those DVDs with like the NBA crossovers, ankle oh, breakers, I ankle think breakers. it was called. Yeah. I just watched those like over and over again. We didn't have the internet and YouTube to watch all that at the yeah. time. So everything Allen Iverson did. It started getting more popular with like the Nike freestyle commercials with mm-hmm. the all black background. Oh, and I always like yeah. dreamt to be in it. And I wish they could remake one now. So like, you know, could, background yeah. like this would be crazy. But yeah. You might have to make one here then. Now yeah. it's all. Uh, <laughs> Kyrie. Kyrie. Everyone handles the ball well now. Kyrie, Damian Lillard. Um. If you had to, like, I guess, like... Oh, you're going to put it in that situation. Yeah, if you to had choose. to choose between the, like, you know, the point guards that they had back then, like Iverson, Sodomar, who would you, would you compare them to the era that we have now of, like, you know, dribblers, like Kyrie, John Wall, like you mentioned, Curry. How would you compare them? Like? It's crazier now. Like, it's... Even, even Iverson said it himself. Like, the stuff Kyrie does and these point guards are doing now is just, like... It's stuff he wouldn't have ever like thought to do. You know? mm-hmm. Like the, I remember mean, there were like sham gods before and all that stuff, but no one was doing it in a game. Mm-hmm. Now they're yeah. doing it effectively to yeah. to like with purpose. But they're not doing it just to be flash anymore. Before it was just like a move they did in like and one mixtapes. Mm-hmm. But now they're actually doing it. Like you saw Westbrook do it, and then he swung a pass to Stephen oh, Adams. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Like he had to do it. Like there's yeah. no other way to do it but to yank it back, right? Yeah. So it's, I think now it's a lot better, but. It's still good before, right? Mm-hmm. You talked good. about efficiency. You talked about that kind of hinted to do you, how often do you dribble or how often <laughs> did you used to, did you used to work on your handles? Do you teach kids handles? What, talk, talk about that part of your life. Growing up, I dribble every day. Yeah. Um, growing up, we didn't have a basketball net probably until I saw we had the basement. The basement was small and we had car- a carpeted basement. So oh. that taught me to like really. A little harder. Yeah. Ball, mm-hmm. as hard as I can yeah. and then my brother and I would just set up different pieces of furniture stools and chairs piano benches and just dribble around them wow. and then I'd play in like my Phil can games when I was like 10 years old so right like maybe half an hour before we left for our games I would practice every crossover on that piano bench wow. <laughs> yeah everything and then and then we'd leave and I'd be good to go and then growing up I just kept handling when I got to be able to be in the gym and then I'd 
use like partner dribbling with like my teammates and stuff. And now, since I'm not really playing anymore, I kind of try to teach that to the younger kids. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I train a lot of kids around the age. Do you tell them to bring a piano bench to their their house? No, now they they <laughs> they kids are yeah, spoiled. Well, now they yeah. have everything. There's a lot of equipment lot nowadays. Of equipment, yeah. They got everything. They got, like there's that D man that. Defensive man that kind of just stands up yeah. and kids could dribble around him. Like. And that, that was probably the the most oldest innovation of you know what they have now. They have the non-slip hands. hands. Yeah. The hands. I have those you had too. the carpet. <laughs> we oh, had the carpet. Like yeah. back in the day, they didn't have that. Like yeah. I know Jason Williams played for Sacramento. He yeah. used to use uh, weights, gardening right? gloves yeah. and yeah. wrist weights wrist, yeah. and put basketballs in uh, plastic bags. Yeah. Now they got the wrap with no grip on it. The yeah. And then the gloves, it's the weighted gloves. Exactly. Crazy now. Oh. What are some of the things that you know uh, that you teach to your like you know besides basketball? Like, what are some of the things that you do, kind of teach your, the the kids that you train a little bit of like advice to them? What kind of things that you give them like in terms of um, how should they you know train or what are some of the things they should have in their mind when they're dribbling? There's something to think you know because a lot of kids would follow uh, whatever usually you tell them because they think that you know. Yeah. So. A lot of kids now, they just they see a lot of stuff on social media, a lot of drills, mm -hmm. and they see what their favorite players do, and they want to do that. And mm -hmm. there's so many kids that are training, and they're doing specific drills, and they don't understand why they're doing it. So I try to teach my kids, mm -hmm. these are the drills I'm doing for you, and I want you to understand why I'm teaching it to you, mm -hmm. why you could, so you could utilize it in a game, right? You know what I'm saying? So um, if they don't understand, while I'm training them during the sessions, ask me. Ask me why I'm doing it, because I need you to know. Right. There's no point in doing it over and over and over again, and then the game comes and you're not going to use it. Exactly. So it's really understanding why they're doing the things they do. Like there's a lot of crazy drills now that I feel they don't need in a game. Like they're yeah. doing too much. So just like stick to a lot of basic things and then add different elements to it, and I feel like they could just get a lot better from that. Mm. When should they start dribbling with two balls? Because I think. You've, you're on your Instagram, you dribble a lot with two balls. <laughs> two so like, kids are I, like, I think you showed me the one with she's dribbling with three yeah. balls. I'm like, how? Yeah. Two, so it's when they got the one down, like pretty well. The two is just an added thing just to kind of overload their brain, yeah. right? And then it teaches them coordination. It teaches them, like a lot of people, they'll, they'll leave comments saying, like, but when are you going to use two balls in the game? Like, never, obviously, mm -hmm. but. It teaches you a lot of coordination. It quickens your hands, um, hand-eye coordination, stuff like that. So, and some of it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to it's hear. It's fun, but it, it's cool to teach them those kind of things because yeah. they obviously learn how to develop dribbling with both hands, yeah. and mm -hmm. it quickens their handles. I feel a lot too. And when you add like the power hands and all that stuff, it, it only gets them better, right?